ضحياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عسمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلاق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس من الشعب صورة الفرق إن شاء الله تعالى Surah Al-Falaq, the word falaqa in Arabic means the daybreak. You know, falaqa, the daybreak. So this is Surah, surah Al-Falaq, it's called the daybreak. It's, this surah is 113, and this surah has five verses. There's a big debate with either this surah is revealed in Mecca or was it revealed in Medina. There's a long discussion amongst the Mufassirin. Some of the scholars, they say revealed in Medina. The reason they say it was revealed in Medina because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went under a magic spell. Someone done some magic spell, sihr, on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll talk about that a little later on. So they believe that, uh, and, and when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was under a magic spell, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very, used to feel uh, lethargic and weak, and, and due to the fatigue, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to ask someone, uh, sometimes that, you know, Aisha, what's happening? You know, there was some sort of confusion. Uh, and that only used to happen momentarily, but, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he sent Jibreel and Mikaeel to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell him what has happened to him, that he's actually bewitched. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then, uh, he, uh, you know, he found he, the, whole, the entire conversation that happened between Jibreel and Mikaeel, the Prophet of Allah heard about that. And then the surah was revealed and the Prophet of Allah was told sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that real pull out of the and pull out of the nas. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the effects of the magic. So some of the Mufassirin, uh, uh, they say, because the Prophet Allah recited Falaq and recited Surah Al-Nas, and it was, he said that, what, that was revealed at that time, so they believe that it's Madinah Surah, because the magic spell that happened, it happened in Madinah, it was toward the end life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why they say, it's a Madinah Surah. Other scholars, they say, no, it's a Makki Surah. That's the opinion of Ibn Abbas and Ibn Abbas and Ibn Abbas and as you know, he's the Mufassir of the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua to him, say, Allahumma faqihu fi deen. Oh Allah, educate him in the knowledge of your religion. Wa'allimhu al-ta'wil fi riwayatin. Imam Rawab al-Hakim fi mustadrak. Imam al-Hakim, he's got this addition. He said, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal and his mustad as well. Wa'allimhu al-ta'wil. Oh Prophet of Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah, teach him fiqh, make him a faqih, a Jewish. That's a dua the Prophet of Allah made for Ibn Abbas And he said, Oh Allah, teach him the interpretation of the Quran. The Quran is ta'wil and tafsir. You know, not everyone get that. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, gave it to Abdullah ibn Abbas And Abdullah ibn Abbas he has so many students, uh, you know, and many of his students, they learn from him as well. So the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abbas is that it's a Makki surah. The surah is a Makki surah. So if it's a Makki surah, then how do you reconcile a Makki surah with what happened to the Prophet وسلم, in Medina? Because he was bewitched. Imam al Bukhari mentioned that the Prophet وسلم, was under a magic spell. Labid ibn al A'sam, a Yahudi uh, Jewish person, or something, he wasn't a Jewish person, he was uh, the ally of a Jewish tribe. He done magic to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet Allah was under some magic spell, and that happened in Medina. So, and then the Prophet Allah recited Falaq and Nas, and that was revealed. So they said, it, "Revealed doesn't mean that it just revealed now. It was already revealed, but it was reminded to the Prophet of Allah that recited this. Remember when the Prophet of Allah passed away sallallahu alaihi wasallam, everyone was running around in the masjid. They don't know what to do because they didn't prepare for that day. I mean, how do you prepare for a day?" For Rasulullah to die, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, every little thing. The Prophet of Allah was such an imam that even to open a window, they would look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For everything, 
It's what do what does the Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's raining. What do we do? We ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Companions, they had this habit that we don't need to worry. We have Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It shows this obedience and love as well. In fact, so many times the Prophet of Allah should ask him, Hey, what time is it? Or something like that. Or what day is it today? He said, Allah is Rasulullah's best. <laughs> we don't know anything. In the presence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, only Rasulullah knows everything. That's how they behave. Suddenly, the one that you look up to, the, for every little thing he passes away, how do you prepare for that? They were not prepared for the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, Anas radiallahu ta'ala used to say, the day the Prophet of Allah passed away, Wallahi al-Azim, it was the darkest day of our entire life. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't see light. Couldn't see light. You could put, you know, there's, candles wasn't giving us light, lantern wasn't giving us light, the sun wasn't giving us light. The Prophet of Allah, you know, it was the darkest day. Allah alayna dunya. The dunya became dark in front of us. We just didn't know what to do. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he, you know, he's ashik. All the Sahaba, they were ushaq, the true lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Umar got his sword out. He said, if anyone say one more time that Prophet Muhammad had passed away, I'm going to chop his head off. And you know, so it was, it was very difficult. This is when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, who stepped in, you know, at this time, that, that is the moment you need a cool person, someone who's a calm in a calm person with a lot of knowledge and wisdom and composure, and that was Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. He ascended the pulpit and he recited the following verse Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul, Qad khalat min qablihi rusul. Muhammad is but a messenger of Allah, and many messengers passed away before him. And he recited the whole verse. Umar said, Wallahi al-Azim, I really thought that the verse was revealed right now. Although, then I realized, hang on, this, is, this, is, this, this verse was something the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa recited to us in Salah. It was, it was revealed after uh, the second Hijri, after the Battle of Uhud, after the third Hijri. So, you know the expression that he said, I thought the verse was revealed just now. Sometimes happens like that. So the interpretation of the Sahabi that Falaq al-Nas was revealed now, meaning that's when the Prophet of Allah recited. So it is most likely revealed in Mecca and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi recited in Medina when he was under a magic spell. So before I t tell you the story of the whole hadith about magic and sorcery and why the Prophet of Allah was under a magic spell, let us first uh, you know, uh, read the verses of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas because I believe everyone in this masjid, we know this Surah, Alhamdulillah, right from the very young age. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ الْنَاسِ are the surah that we all learn and we will memorize it. And if you ask yourself, I think you will agree with me that it is the most recited verses in our, in our salah. You know, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَا قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ فَلَقَ الْنَاسِ They all recite. You know, sometimes when you, when you read sunnah, you don't think about which surah to recite. They come to rescue automatically. So we recite these two surahs. And we should, you know, because these two surahs are very powerful. We need to decide with a lot of yaqeen, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one hadith, do you not see that there have been ayat revealed to me? This is very important because later on I'm going to tell you, there was a dispute between Abdullah bin Abbas and Ubay bin Ka'b in regards to Surah Al-Farah or Surah Al-Nas. Abdullah bin Abbas, sorry, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu alayhi and Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu There was a little debate, I'll talk about that later on. Anyway. So the Prophet of Allah said, do you not see, there have been ayat, verses, revealed to me, revealed to me. So that this is, this falaq al-nas is actually Qur'an revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this verse was revealed to me, uh, uh, the light of which has not been seen before. They said, oh, what is the Prophet of Allah? The Prophet said, قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Imam Muslim mentioned this hadith. Then Imam Ahmad in his Muslim, he mentioned another hadith. He said, وَعُخْبَ, وعخبة Should I not teach you two surahs? The word surahs means these are revelation. Because Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, unfortunately, he was, he made a mistake in the very beginning. He thought these two surahs, when they, they are revelation, but they shouldn't be part of the Quran. Someone so senior and had this kind of opinion. Why? We'll talk about that a little later on. But remember this. The Prophet of Allah said, Uqba, should I not teach you two surahs that are of the best two surahs that the people recite? I said, of course, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa please do tell us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then he told me to recite Al-Falaq and An-Nas. Then we have another hadith. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 
the Prophet of Allah said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah bin Abbas, wa Abdullah bin Abbas, should I tell you, should I inform you the best thing that those who seek protection, you know, if you want to seek protection, people, they wear, you know, all the armors and they put their swords on, they put all the gear on and all the equipments, they have the shield, and then they go out. That's, in the older days, that's how the Jews should go out, because you always have to be ready. Everyone should carry a sword with them, you know. Carrying a weapon was like, that's how they should do in the olden days, uh, uh, you know. But do you really want proper protection? Protection is so, you know, because this Quran, this verse is falak and nas, they are like your protection. You go out, you recite in this two surah, Allah will protect you. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, the best protection that you, one could ask Allah for is by reciting al-falak and nas. So these are the verses of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. And I mentioned to you earlier, if you remember, that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would not go to sleep without reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq and nas he will basically get his hand out. It doesn't take long. We should make this into a habit. Get your hand out, recite, قُلْبُ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ الْفَلَقْ وَالنَّاسِ Dry speak, and then you rub over, over all your body, and then you go to sleep. Inshallah, Allah, no nightmares, no hocus pocus, no attack of anything like that. No wasabis of shayatin or jinn. Yeah, this is something that we should always do, because when you are sleeping, it's not in your control what, what's happening. Inshallah, Allah, Allah will look after you and assist you. So what is the cause of revelation? Well, a few things to mention. The cause of revelation, Sha'an al Nuzul, is number one, first of all, that Mu'awwidatayn and Mu'awwidatayn were revealed simultaneously, one after another. And, you know, Falaq was revealed and An Nas. Together they were revealed at the same time, without any delay. And I told you the debate is whether in Makkah and Medina, and, you know, I will leave it to that. And I've explained already that most of the ulama, they inclined that it was revealed in Makkah. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that there was a, a Jewish person, he cast a magical spell, spell on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and immediately after this spell, the Prophet of Allah fell in. This magic, this whole, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a magic was done to him, it happened to him for six months. Imam al-Bukhari mentioned, Lisit tati ashwa. six months, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was under some sort of magic spell. Now you're probably thinking, if the Prophet of Allah is under a magic spell, right, then how does he lead salah? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. When it comes to revelation, I said it to you before as well. When it comes to reciting Quran, giving da'wah, leading salah, no one can stop Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him for this reason. Ya ayyuhar rasul, ballil ma unzila ilayh. Fa in lam taf'al fa ma ballagda risalatak. Allah said, oh Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever we reveal to you, convey to the people. If you don't do it, properly, but if you don't do this, then you have not conveyed the reason why I created you. So you can't, you can't never ever, no one can stop a prophet delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, no magic, no sorcery, no poison, nothing like that. Nothing can stop Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah created him for that reason. And Allah said, don't worry about people trying all the best to assassinate you, to kill you, to attack you, to poison you, to uh, do things to you. Wallahu ya'asimu min nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the people. So Allah has already promised that I will look after you. But it does not mean that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is immune to all the physical causes. He will fall ill. How many times the Prophet of Allah says, sallallahu alayhi wa you know, I'm hurt by what the people are saying. Allah said to Allah says to the Prophet of Allah, La'allaka bakhirun. You're worrying too much about La'allaka bakhirun. Wala tadhab nafsuka alayhim hasaratin. He used to feel the pain. When the people used to abuse him verbally, they used to call him sahir. He's a, he's a sorcerer. They used to call him sha'ir, poet. You're probably thinking poet is a nice thing to say. It's another way of saying, it's, it's like a, a diplomatic way to say he's a liar. Because the poet they say what they don't do. So they, they, they know this one. And the Arab they should say the best poetry, the best poetry is the one that you have more lying in it. If you make things up. So they used to call the Prophet of Allah a liar basically, indirectly. That's why the Prophet of Allah used to get really hurt. He was, you know, he used to, he used to come home crying. He used to come home sometime. His own family members never recognized him. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she wants, you know like when a father comes home, children, they used to run, you know, to meet their father like this year. 
you know, take, take, take away the Wi-Fi, they'll do it even now as well, you know. So this would run towards the father, ah, oh, Abba, you know, Abba's home, father's home. Fatima was very close to the Prophet So, but she was like hesitating, is that really, you know, is it really him? Because what happened was, it was very difficult, and then she did recognize the Prophet Sallallahu She ran towards him, and then the Prophet Sallallahu said, why are you crying? She said, Araka Ya Rasulullah, by just looking at you, Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from this you can understand the daily amal, the continue, every single day, what kind of activities the Prophet of Allah was doing every day. She said, Qad Look what has happened to you. The color of the face has changed. Because in the intense heat, the Prophet of Allah would go out and give da'wah. You know, we can't even take 25 and 30 degrees without boiling hot. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's daily routine was every day was to go out and give da'wah. There is no shade in Mecca. There is no air conditioning in Mecca. But he would give da'wah to Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he was to come back, the color of his face is changed. And she goes, وَخْلَوْ لَقَ ثِيَابُ I could see the clothes are torn apart. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fatima, you don't need to worry. Don't worry about me. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has promised me that this religion of Islam will reach the four corners of the world. Don't worry about him. Allah has promised me. My job is to convey the message and the religion will reach the four corners of the world. Wherever night falls, this religion will get there. In other words, the four corners of the world. Anyway, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, uh, uh, for six months, he was under a magic spell. When he was under a magic spell, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to feel a bit weak. What happened was, he couldn't realize the Prophet of Allah, what was going on. But when he, when he leaves salah, when he gives da'wah, he's all fine. He just basically for his personal things, for example, when he was to do something for himself, he used to feel a bit lethargic, lethargic and weak and uh, tired. And sometimes she said, Fatima, have I done this? She said, no, you haven't. Uh, Aisha, have I done this? No, you haven't. So a few things like that was happening to him, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Suddenly, the Prophet of Allah was sleeping. And then, two angels walked into his room. And then they start talking to one another. Jibril said, this person is sleeping. Mikhail said, yeah, he is sleeping. Jibril said, no, his eyes are shut, his eyes are shut but his heart is away. His heart is away. You know, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should say, Tanamu aynaya wa la yanamu qalbi. It's something amazing about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when he's in his room, any conversation anyone having, you hear it. When we are in our room and fast asleep, we don't even hear the alarm, anything, ringing, mobile, nothing like that. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he's sleeping, he could hear any single conversation like that. Because his heart is awake, because he's received revelation day and night, you see. So Jibreel said, don't worry, let us carry on talking, because he could listen to us. So Mikhail said, what happened to him? He said, he says, oh, he's bewitched, he's under some magic spell. You know, Mikhail said, who done it? So this conversation is happening actually, so the Prophet of Allah could find out what happened to him. That all this day, the, way, the reason why you're feeling weak is because of this. He said, a man called Labid ibn al-A'asam, they revealed his name. He said, what did he do? He said, fi mushkin wa mushatin. He used the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, the Prophet used to comb his hair. So someone secretly took the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, our fuqaha, Jewish, they used to say that we should not, you know, the hair is very important. We should bury our hair. When you cut your hair, that's the fuqaha they wrote in the books. People don't understand it. When you cut your hair, is that you should be very protective of your hair. Because, you know, people who want to do damage to you, that's what they want. They want your hair. <laughs> this is, the, you know, the, the, the evil people out there. That's what they look for. Some body parts of you. So, especially hair and nails. And the Jews, they have said, nails and hair, you should bury it. Because once you bury it, the effects is buried as well. Now, if someone takes it out, they can't do nothing to it. Anyway, or nowadays we don't we can't bury it. Everyone has garden and etc. What we should do is be, be careful about it. Put it in a bag, close it, and then remove it like that. People they just have their hair everywhere. It's, it's, it's not good. It's not, it's not a good habit. That's why some of the Jews they also said when you cut your nails, don't cut in the night. Because imagine like you know uh, one or two is gone missing now. Yeah, there are some people they are looking for it. <coughs> that shouldn't happen, but there's a possibility. Anyway, he took the prophet's hair, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he put 11 knots into it. Yes? And the Prophet, and then what he did, he threw it into the well. So the Prophet, when he woke up, he heard the whole conversation. He said, Aisha, I know why I was feeling 
all weak and everything. So what happened? He said, someone done a magic spell. He said, really? He said, yes. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ammar, Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala, and one or two other companions, that go to a particular well, dive into it, under a rock, there is some hair of mine, you know, and there's 11 knots into something. Exactly how the Prophet of Allah said, they went to the well and they got it out. And then they bought it, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it, Qul a'udhru bil falaq, open one knot. Qul a'udhru bil falaq, min sharri ma khalaq. Every time he's reciting the opening. Qul a'udhru bil falaq, min sharri ma khalaq, wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab, wa min sharri nafathati bil uqad, wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad. Qul a'udhru bil nas, maliki al nas, ilahi al nas, min sharri waswas al khannas, الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس 11 11 ناس 1 verse and he was opening like that and alhamdulillah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he basically completely got rid of the effects of the sihr now Aisha was very upset so the Prophet of Allah who is this man expose him bring him in front let's do something to him the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said أما الله فقد شفاني Aisha relax Allah has given me shifa I don't want to expose it I don't want to do that. He's, he's also part of my ummah as well. Maybe he will feel ashamed about all this and he does tawbah as well. The Prophet of Allah was so merciful towards Ra'uf rahim So merciful towards everyone. They said, leave it, Aisha. He tried to do something to me. Nothing happened to me. Look, I'm fine. I'm all here. It's finished now. Anyway, so this is the reason why some of the scholars they have said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, he recited the 11 verses and removed the 11 nuts from that where the magic is done, sihr is done. And so anyway, he said, Makki Surah, Madhuri Surah, I've already explained. Most likely it was a Makki Surah, but the Prophet he recited, he was reminded to recite this to get rid of the effects of the magic. Here I would like to say a few things. Number one is that sometimes some people, they feel really weak, or they don't, you know, straight away we say that, you know, maybe some sort of magic has happened to him, something like that. We do some ruqya. Alhamdulillah, that's not a problem. We could do, you know, we're allowed to do ruqya, we're allowed to do ruqya sharia. But this is important as well. A lot of the time, we just realize, we just rely on ruqya. Sometimes maybe this person is not well because it's got sort of mental problem. You get it? This is the time when we need to seek medical help as well. You can't just rely, can, because the Prophet system, he's got sharia, he recognized he was told by Jibreel and Mikhail that he's got some sort of magic influence. We don't have no Jibreel coming to us or Mikhail coming to us like that. We have to basically reach out and find out from experts. You know, so there's nothing wrong going to a doctor and say that this person is behaving in this manner. A lot of people, they just go to Rukia Center. If it was up to me, I would close all the Rukia Centers. I'm telling you, you might not like what I say. Because most of these guys are not trained. And this is not a particular Rukia Center I'm attacking. I don't even know. I want to find out what kind of Rukia training these people have. Because for Rukia, you need to be a scholar. You need to be a scholar. For Rukia, you need to recite the Quran properly as well, with Tajweed. For Rukia, you need to know the right Quranic verses as well. Anyone just practice Rukia like that? What is this? Is this a business or something? That you start charging people 500 and 1,000 pounds like that? There are so many people, they have mental illnesses, they have problems, and these guys are just basically charging them left, right, center. So my advice to everyone, before you run to Rukia Center, a bit of investigation, inshallah ta'ala, speak to some of your local people, tell them that, you know what, is it okay to go to the Rukia place? You know, inshallah ta'ala, someone will know. Some people, they probably have an experience. Talk to your local musalli that you probably know. Talk to your imams. Get some advice, then go to But Not every single Rukia uh, center, they actually know how to do Rukia. You know, I listened to some of these Rukia guys, and they were butchering the Quran. The Quran they were reciting, it's not even the Quran, Allah knows what they were reciting like that. They don't know what they're reciting like that. Know what are you? a bit more louder. I would like to hear you recite louder because I'm too scared. Why? Because my tajweed is not good. Well, then you shouldn't be reciting this. It's just, imagine someone give you a driving test, driving lesson, and he said that, you know, uh, I'm sorry, actually, I don't know how to drive. You know, what is this nonsense? How do you get this job like that? So this is why it's very important, yeah? So a very important advice that please, before you run to Rukia centers, speak to someone before you go, that's one. Secondly, as I said to you, don't ignore your medical, your GP. Look, I'm not saying the GP are prophets and Ambiya, but you know what? The Prophet Sallallahu told us that when we are ill, we're supposed to do istisharat al-tabib, consulting with the doctor. Get advice from them, and then at the end of the day, you make your own decision, inshallah ta'ala. This is quite important, because a lot of the time, a lot of people, they have a lot of illnesses, they have a lot of mental problems. Some, so, so many people, you know, they have, a, 
they, 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 you know, something has happened, you know, they probably have uh, you know, autism, for example, and people basically, they do doing Rukia and Rukia thing, he's, there's, you know, just, there's, a, there's a specific way to talk to the child. He's not disabled, that you have to ignore him. He has autism, there's a lot of training, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, books has been written about this one. The doctors will tell you, that, you know, he's fine. He basically does his things in this particular way. You have to do in a, you have to speak him in a particular way. That's all it is. There's nothing wrong. Our people think, oh, you free like he say that. You know, it's kuch, kuch ho gaya usko. Koi jin a gaya hai. They treat him, they mistreat the child. They don't even talk to him like that. No. You know, there, 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 are, there, are, there are various ways of doing certain things like that. So, a lot of the people, they said, oh, I took him to a Molana sub, he gave a Tawiz, a big Tawiz, and he was working, and now he's not working anymore. So many wrong things that we have in our communities like that. That's not the way to do. So, inshallah, Allah, sorry about this, a little bit of rant about this. Is, inshallah, Allah, you know, uh, Rukia is a good thing, reciting the Quran, always give us Shifa. Inshallah, there are verses of uh, Shifa, we recite Allah Azza wa Jal, His words has a lot of power, we will get Shifa. But the right person has to recite. The man of Muttaqi has to recite. Imagine a person who's reciting, he doesn't even pray five times Salah. Imagine the person who recites, he doesn't even know his stinger. These are the people who are sitting in some centers. So this is very important, Inshallah. And, uh, you know, I'll go back to the Tafsir now. So, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ And قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِالنَّاسِ was revealed. Uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu for protection. And this is why it's very important that we decide this uh, surah for protection. The very first verse, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, Qul, means say. Say, that's like Allah telling the whole world that anything that Muhammad says is from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Quran, this, this surah is like, uh, we, and every time we just Qul, 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 Ya Ayyul Kafirun, Qul, Hu Allah, Hu Ahad, Qul, A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, Whatever you do, kul, that's basically Allah telling the Prophet of Allah to recite. That means, O oh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are my Prophet, you will recite what I tell you to recite. The Prophet of Allah doesn't write his own Quran, as the disbeliever they used to think. He wrote, he said that only what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala told him. So, kul, O oh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you say, and let the Ummah also learn from you, and they should say as well, A'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq. I seek refuge with the Lord of Daybreak. Allah is teaching us that if we decide these words, then Allah will protect us. A'udhu, I seek refuge. Refuge. Bi Rabbil Falaq, with the help of Allah. Rabbul Falaq is the Lord of the Daybreak. Allah is the one who brings the night into day and then day into night. So I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brings the day from the night. Rabbul Falaq. Bi Rabbil Falaq. Min sharni ma khalaq. I seek refuge with the Lord of with the Lord of Daybreak from what? Against the harm in what He has created. Min sharni from all the evils and harm of His creation. Ma khalaq is very is am is general. This covers the entire creation. Means oh Allah, save me from the evil of human being, the evil of animals, and the evil of any objects. Everything. So, you know, I don't want the snakes to bite me or scorpions to stun me or anything like that. So, you, this is the dua that you recite. Yeah, you will be protected from all the evil. Yeah, this means all, uh, I, I, I seek refuge in you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I seek refuge with you, O oh Allah azza wa jal, so that you save me from all the evil of what you have created. You know, evil from everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says three things. وَمِن شَرِّ الْغَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَرْ the harm in the night when darkness gathers. Yeah? You know, all the people who does waswasa, magic, and all that, they do in the night. That's why we say, the word ghasim means night. Ida waqa means when the dark is intense, when the night is intensifies in darkness, it is really dark. Once the Prophet Sallallahu uh, he was out and he saw the beautiful moon. And then uh, the Prophet looked at the moon 